Welcome back, it's me. It is I. This is Jeremiah. This is New Covenant. This is, uh, we're just about halfway done with Romans here. We're, we're just mentioning a few items in the book of Romans. We're, we're reading a lot of chapters here, or listening to the reading of the, the chapters. And what we might do is go back to five again and itemize a few standard scriptures for Christianity. Uh, I mentioned one that people don't mention very much, which is 3, 3.31 in Romans. Most people, a lot of people know, of course, 3, 3, uh, 5.1 five, Therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith to this grace into this grace where in we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So, <clears throat> some heavy stuff right there. And uh, I like to point out where, where Paul says, wherein we stand, and I like to also point out, into this grace, we have access by faith into this grace. And that's a, that's that's very deep. It's... it's uh, Paul is, is a very deep man. He, 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 is, uh, he doesn't hold back. And this is Jeremiah with the New Covenant. We greet you in the only name given. We're getting right back into Romans. The only name given amongst men. There's only one. Okay, don't get confused. Okay, uh, by grace wherein we stand. So by whom we have access by faith into grace. So you have access by your confidence into this unmeritable favor. We, that, that's what I want to talk about for a couple of minutes because I'm going to move on and skip ahead and then come back. Okay, I, I want to read... Uh, I have the whole chapter 5 ready to go, but I don't... Uh, because he, he, this... It, it, it just takes so much time to go through this gentleman and to do it, do it, do it right. Go through thoroughly and expound. It's okay to explain a few things here, but to try to go through everything, and I'm not going to do that at this time. I just wanted to remind you that that's why we're doing, having a lot of vocabulary here uh, in August. Next year, should the Lord tarry, I am going to build a sequence for you and, and, a, and a format for Paul. And let me give you an example. The, the, the way I have the April matrix is, is what I'm going to do with Paul later on. Not right now. Which is, the April matrix is the basics of Christianity that I've given, given you, which is basically taking a few subjects, a few subjects, and then just putting them in a sequence so that you can start you can start thinking about Christianity in a very clear, smooth, uh, connect the dots, you know, the word is understand. Uh, I think the Greek word for understand is to put everything together. So, so you're just learning to get a good understanding of what's going on. And, and that's, that's your mind is working and you emotionally have a uh, your mind and your emotions are all, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, it's called homeostasis, you know, it's psychological homeostasis. You know, you're, you're, everything is just settled well. That, that's a good way of looking at it, okay? And you need sound words in order for things to settle well in your mind so, so that you don't get lost, because it's very easy to get lost in Bible study. And that's why I gave you the April Matrix, because the April Matrix is basically, basically looking at Bible study from this perspective. There's an agreement that you make called a covenant. And this is a 2,000-year-old covenant to agree with. Father God, 
from the Lord Jesus Christ. And that, that agreement is on the same grounds. And that's a very good way of putting it, and that's what your dictionary says. Now, the ground is not ambiguous. It's not out there all over the place. It is called sound doctrine. And it's the doctrine. And it is a set, it, it is set principles of reality that God has, God has revealed to you about the way things actually are. That's why they have the word actualization. It's reality in your face. And when you agree with that, that's, that's what it's there for, for you to agree with. Let's put it that way. But the point is, is that you have an agreement offer for all of Adam's children for 2,000 years, basically. And that's the gospel, and obeying the gospel, and obeying the royal law. Okay? Which is to love the Lord your God. Okay, now... There are quite a few subjects in that sound doctrine that you've agreed to submit yourself to, right? And it's a closed document. You can't add, subtract, or twist. If you do, that's why you're called a heretic. I'll say it again. That's why people are called heretics or twister donuts, as I call it. That's a, for, for, uh, since we have donuts in the United States, a lot of them, and they have twister donuts. Now, you're supposed to be a, a bar, a straight bar, not serpentine. And, and people who add, subtract, and twist, and hide, they're basically called heretics or twisters to the doctrine that's right in front of them in the red letters here, such as the, the demonic witnesses will knock on your door, and, and the, the hand of a Bible where they took Hebrews chapter 1 and they removed quite a few scriptures out of there, and then they hand it to you and go, here, here it is. Or the Mormons knock on your door, and they say, oh, excuse me, uh, in case you didn't know, everybody had been wrong until Joseph Smith came along or something. He, he was even right there for a while. We had eight and nine-year-old wives and stuff. Okay, that's called, in, in the Protestant world, mental illness, and yet thousands and thousands of people have bought into following a man who had multiple eight, nine, ten-year-old wives. <clears throat> that's just the tip of the iceberg. What, the point is that that's called a twister donut. Now, it, sound doctrine is a set of principles that you read that a fourth to eighth grader can understand. Now, what we're dealing with right now with Paul, it takes a little bit more comprehension to really understand what he's saying. And you, you have to take your time with it, with this gentleman. It's kind of like get, definitely getting into the B and A category of the class. But let's get back to, to, to my April matrix. So that's sound doctrine, a set of principles. Now, out of all of these principles and teachings and subjects, the basic subject is living bread. These are the things that are required of you. Watch out stuff. The, the kind of stuff the devil attacks. The kind of stuff that the heretics, which are demons, attack. Because they... they they want you to lose your soul. They've lost their soul. So they're determined to make everybody lose their soul. God's letting them do all of this for his reasons, for his purposes. The winnowing fan is in his hand. And the floor is, the purging floor is, is ready, you know, and, and the, uh, the axe, as John said, is laid at the root of the trees. The people who take the living bread, and of course, uh, you, you're going to get a lot of what we call living word, uh, because it's all living. It's not as though the living bread is the only living, you know, you can use a lot of living word. But the key thing is, did you go through the motions of the living bread, which is part of sound doctrine. Which means a lot of sound doctrine is living bread that came down from heaven. That, 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 that if a man eat this bread, and I, I already have it up there as basically humiliation, because most of the most of the living bread that Jesus Christ gave to us is, is, is centered on the volume, the body of the letter, is humiliation. It's quite clear. He says, take up your cross six times. That, that, ought to, that, ought to, that ought to get your, your attention. 
if you're going to get a C in the classroom, I'll say it again. If you're going to get a C in the class, a passing grade, you're going to realize that. Now, some people are going to get a D and barely pass. And their works will be burnt up, as Paul said, and so forth. And Paul's, Paul's discussion on wood, hate, and stubble. So, you know, we're, we're not trying to say that you have to definitely get a full understanding of the gospel to be saved. That's not the point. The point is, is that we, we know for sure that you are saved when you get a C in the class. Let's put it that way. D people, uh, we, I, I hope that everybody's a D student and passes the class. They don't get an F in the class. That's the point. And flunk. But what we want to do is we, we, we want to establish C-grade students here at least. That's the point. And a C-grade student is somebody who definitely appears to be studying, to show themselves approved. Okay, they, they're operating in the church doing something. And uh, this is what we might call a definite C student who is passing the class. Uh, you know, and in, in, in they're in order, they're busy, you know. They, uh, we know that their lamps are full, especially for the rapture. Because the master said, uh, he whose lamps are trimmed, that's who he's taking out of here to any second now in the rapture. And the lamps that, the lamps that are trimmed are the people who are definitely doing something. They're, 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 they're on the narrow brick road. How they're on the narrow brick road, how, you know, how, how they are, what's the word I'm looking for? Excuse me, we're, we're not here to, to nitpick because I'm not picking the people who are going in the rapture anyway. But what we want to do here is, as a normal Bible teaching Protestant uh, offer for the people online, is to, when they have time, and some people may not already have a church, but they want to go online and listen to some more Bible study other than their own pastor or something like that. that that's basically what I'm here for. You know, I'm kind of an evangelical instrument just as much as I am a teacher because most people already have a teacher to teach them. I'm kind of like number 13 here a little. A lot of Bible teachers, that's what they are. They're the extra in the baker's donut, you know, excuse me, in the baker's dozen. Let's put it that way. But But it's a very significant element because people who have gotten lost, people who have who have wandered and so forth, I, I, I can help them out. People who have never heard the gospel, who are in Sharia law, who are stuck in the, the, the drug cartel, who are, who are preaching Shintoism in Japan, uh, Hindus who, who get a red dot on their forehead, who've decided that they want to be saved and know they're saved by receiving Jesus Christ and preaching Jesus Christ, for what the heart man believed was resulting in righteousness, and, and then you start living right and doing right and preaching and confessing and, and that's your evidence that you love Jesus Christ. And, and on the Lord's Day, you're, we know you're saved. It's not crackle pop. Okay. And we cultivate a C grade here. That, that's, what, that's what most Bible teachers do. They, they don't cultivate, uh, uh, very few Bible teachers will cultivate a D grade student or, 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 if, or if they're decent Bible teachers, uh, they, they won't, people won't get an F in your class. They won't flunk salvation because we don't want anybody to flunk salvation. Now, every now and then we get, we get into some heavy stuff. Uh, we have a lot of vocabulary here. That might scare some people off, but uh, I don't think it's going to scare a lot of people off. Uh, I think a lot of people are going to want to, to be disciplined and not just uh, go along and get along. They want to be uh, ardent listeners, and, and they want to make sure their salvation. And the best way to make sure your salvation is for you to look for a B grade here. That's the, it's a very simple point. You know, it doesn't mean that you're a special child of God, so to speak. It just means that you are uh, you are more serious than the guy around the corner, who, who who's a decent guy, who who's a decent American. He goes to church, he loves his family, but he spends too much time on sports. Too much time wandering around doing things that he probably shouldn't be doing, in terms of just uh, wood, hay, and stubble. You know, oh, I, I'm going to work on my motorcycle all day. You know, every day. But I went to church. But I'm, you know, uh, you know, these are the kind of people that are in the maybe zone. 
especially for the rapture and so forth. Because I, I'm not the one, one who makes the final determination of the rapture or who's saved, it, it, you know, in general. The Bible says that the, the secret of men's heart are going to be revealed on the Lord's day. So, uh, you know, I, I'm not Captain, you know, fix it all and know it all or something. You know, I'm just here to make a general application of this knowledge and to share it and, and the chips fall where they may. That's the bottom line. And as a supplemental Bible teacher, people have looked at my videos. Uh, um, I, I expose myself to a lot of people who already have a church. I expose myself to people who don't want to go to church, uh, who, who, have, who have not gone to church, people who can't go to church. There's a lot of people out there. During this medical emergency here worldwide, a lot of restrictions were here. And one of them was church attendance. So that should have made my option here probably a little bit more popular. But it just goes to show that even though there were medical is uh, emergency issues, we still had people who were, who were still trying to do things on their own. Because that's essentially what the world does. People try to do things on their own. Th th there's pride in you doing things on your own. But, 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 but it's also a roller coaster because you can't handle the world. You, 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 you weren't built with the emotion and, and, and the cognitive processes to handle the world. You just weren't made to do that. You're going to be depressed and sad inevitably if you have half a heart. If you have half a mind and half a heart, and, and, and you know, you're just a decent human being on many levels, you're going, to, you're going to have some problems. That's why people go to alcohol, they go to all these things, because you can't really handle the world on your own. You can't handle all these images on the computer. You can't handle a circus. You, you can't handle Las Vegas. You, can't, you, you weren't made to handle all of this. You just weren't made to do that. You were made to, to fellowship God and to rely upon Him as your shepherd. That's just the way it goes. But when you're on your own, you have pride. I, I made it. I did it. You know, I, and, and it's, it's really just uh, it's, it's, it's buffoonery because... You can say you made it on your own, but you, 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 there's no way that you can know uh, a truth and be circumspect and know your world properly without the gospel. It's impossible. And it's very sad to see a lot of people who, who want to take it on their own, you know, and, 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 and go through the roller coaster of the emotions that are inevitable when people try to do things on their own. Uh, in America, they, they, in the 60s and so forth, you started hearing more and more songs about on my own. I, I did it my way. I, I'm going to, uh, you know, uh, with, with my last ounce of courage. And all of these songs started coming out because, because, it, it, because it's the devil's roller coaster whereby that you are now, you feel strong now. Woo! I'm going to reach the unreachable star. And, and, and all of these concepts begin to infect America. And that's why we're where we are now. Because the 60s was a big move into, I don't need God. And I can do what I want to do. And I like Freud. I like Dolly. I like uh, uh, Fromm. I like Freud. You know, I, you know, I, I like these people now. And, and they're selling thousands of books in America. And Look Magazine. And, and, uh, and Time Magazine. And all of a sudden, these people that used to be Saturday Evening Post are now Saturday evening uh, demonic. They're, they're, they're opening their mind up to, to flights of fantasy as to what reality is, and, and, and you're empowering yourself. And in, and in the 70s, self-magazines were very popular in the grocery stores. That's what happened. It, it, it has a progression. The, the 60s were freedom, and the 70s were, well, let's just get it right here. I'm on a me magazine. We just read in Paul, preferring, preferring others over myself. Is that obeying Paul the Apostle and the Master, preferring others? No. no. It's, it's, it's an attack on, on Christianity, serving God, and submitting yourself to the concepts of the doctrine of Jesus Christ. That, that's all it is. I, I did it my way. And so this is what's happening. And, and when, you, when you plant those seeds, it just gets worse and worse and worse. 
I had a college student ask me, uh, who was from another country, I went to a college that had the most diverse population in the history of college, in the history of higher education, in Los Angeles. Lots of Russians, Ethiopians, whatever you call them, everybody was there. I met people from everywhere. It was very interesting. But a couple of people asked me, uh, I, I know one of them did, they said, what happened to America in the 60s? What a very perspicacious observation. They noticed that all of a sudden, things went south ethically. Family, uh, 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 honesty. Uh, it, it, it was quite clear to this individual that the 60s introduced mayhem and the, and the destruction of the, the backbone of America. And, and, and then the 70s came, then it was me, then the 80s came, then it was gang violence taking over the streets. And, and then adultery uh, doubles up and triples up. And divorce doubles and triples. Then orphans double and triple. Elderly abuse doubles and triples. Cold hearts just get colder. Commercials have more confusion on TV than ever. People love their cars, their, their cats, their dogs, their trees. People love their, their, their houses. And all of a sudden people are on television saying, I love this, I love that, I love this, I love that, I love this. But nobody is saying, I love Jesus. And people are now loving everything but Jesus Christ. They might throw in Jesus uh, uh, once, once, every, once a month when they say a prayer, you know. Yeah, you know, I, I heard that song, Nearer My God to the, uh, uh, we'll sing it in the bar. And that's basically what's known as inadequate. And the master uses the word enough and sufficient. And what you're dealing with is, is a bunch of people who are not enough and they're not sufficient. It's a falling away of the Saturday Evening Post and Norman Rockwell paintings, going to bed early, putting on a plaid shirt, and going to bed and staying married, and no violence, no horror movies. Uh, right now you can go online here on this cable that I have, this channel that I have, and you can, get, you can click on like seven horror channels. And in high definition, they're dismembering human bodies, and people are screaming. You have to be out of your mind if you think that's not going to have an impact on society. You're absolutely, absolutely out of your mind. And now we can see why God flooded the earth. And now we can see why Noah got into a big boat or a small ship and, and, and he took off into the, into the wild blue yonder. Now let's get to the lesson germane as I go into what happened to a little bit of Americana here. The history of America, what happened to America, and the leader of the free world, you might say, where we, where we were kind of like the last demographic of people who were William Penn, love your neighbor, people. Uh, we, were, we were some of the last people on this mesa who had the, the, the what we might call the Ten Commandments, and we had William Penn and the Pilgrims, and people like Abraham Lincoln, who, who, who led the way here for this country. In spite of the fact that we had the South, which was really what we might call a, a non-entity. For, for, for the most part in American history, uh, the South has been a non-entity. A lot of people in the South, a, a, a good portion of them, they had nothing to do with, with people who were obedient to Jesus Christ and, and obeyed the gospel. They were basically a lot of TV preacher people. They were very plastic. They, 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 or they were overdressed. There was a lot of, of marriage in, in, within your own family, uh, a lot of alcohol, and a lot of just fake, uh, they're just fake humans. Yeah, I, I know the scripture, honey. You know. Yeah, for God so loved the world, honey. We know those scriptures. A lot of these people knew a lot of scriptures too. 
But they weren't doing anything about them. They, they just listened to them and knew them, and they sounded good. But, but, the, but they didn't practice it, and they didn't really devote themselves to Jesus Christ. Knowing the Bible very well doesn't save you. The devil knows the Bible probably very well. You know, so knowing the Bible, it, you, need to, you need to put your heart into all of this and to, and to demonstrate that you're going to practice the very simple principles of love your neighbor, and it can't be own slaves. So the whole point is that uh, the South has been a non-entity in America for a long time. It's just, it's just the people who live in the North where I live right now, before they had a big migration of Southern people moving up here, which was a disaster for this area. It, it was the devil. It, 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 that's all it was. When after the Civil War, hundreds and thousands of Southerners moved up here with their flags, and, and it, it just ruined this place. Then when the Catholics started really coming here and the devil started pushing his, his presence into North America here, uh, it, it, it just means that it's, it's, a, it's a formula for disaster. And then the Mormons became popular here in the North, and then the, the, the demonic witnesses became popular here a little bit. And, and, and before you know it, uh, th this place is just, just as bad almost as the South was because we have nothing but devils wandering around, people who are very proud People who pay penance for what they do as far as getting to heaven. I, I pay my way, you know, I carry rocks up a mountain, but what the Catholics teach. You go carry, scrape your knees on the ground, and, and God's going to pay attention to you, especially Mary. And you, and, you, and you break the number one commandment, thou shalt not have any other gods before me. And you break that commandment, it's, it's no big deal. It's no big deal you're hanging around people who are kneeling before gods that aren't God. You know, it's no big deal, you know, hey, dude, just be cool. They're nice people, bro, you know. You know, and, and so we, we, we enter into this world, and all of a sudden, Abraham Lincoln's family is surrounded, you know. William Penn's family is surrounded, like Custer's last stand, you know, with people who say they know Mary, and they, and they call their building our lady, like, like they know the lady. She, she's our friend, and we know her, and, and she's actually dead. So you name a university after necromancy, you know, where, 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 where people think that they're actually talking to a dead person, and, and, and they can also pray for you after you're dead. That, that God's going to listen to you as far as them going to heaven or not going to heaven. And all of these issues are just serious issues, and it's horrible. It, 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 we, you had a very sound northern America here, with, with even some parts of Canada, where we had a lot of uh, church communes and Protestant people living together who left Europe uh, and so forth. And it was a beautiful situation in general. And then all of a sudden the Indians are being cared for and loved by William Penn when he came here. A lot of people, 50% uh, uh, of the population thought that we, could, we should wipe out the Native Americans. Even after William Penn came here and taught loving to love Native Americans. They, they, they still didn't want to do it. Now, a lot of Native Americans asked for it because they were, some of them were indeed savages. But, 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 but William Penn came here with, with an obvious attitude to reconcile yourself with the Indians and let's try to live together. And he was very successful. But once again, when, when, when things start going good, look who shows up. Worship Mary, people. Call a man wearing all black your father. When Jesus clearly said, don't call anyone your father. Clearly, it's, it's fourth grade grammar. So we, in America, we Protestants are surrounded by these people. And we protest these people. That's why we're called Protestants. But we love them, but we protest what they do. That's what we do here. I had a Catholic friend who kept trying to make excuses uh, because he's reformed or, you know, he belongs to an organization that's different. You know, when, when they kneel before Mary, they don't really mean it or something. And listen, I, I told him, I said, dude, the Bible says to flee Babylon. Paul says to withdraw yourself. Get yourself out of there. I don't want to hear it. That was a good friend of mine in college. What's the point? The point is, is that we're not brain dead here. And the reason why we're not brain dead is because we're disciplined. We're disciples. We listen to the master, and we are going to see grade. And that goes back to my original point is we want to see grade. Now, we're going to get into blessed are the persecuted and rejoicing and, 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 and weeping with those who weep here in a moment. Okay? I'm almost done with half of my Romans lesson, and we're, uh, we have Corinthians waiting for us here.
uh, and I have Matthew waiting for me here also, 20 or so. Those are the, some of the next things I'm going to work on uh, as we move on through August, okay? Let me get back to the matrix just for a moment. The matrix, April matrix, is basically the foundation of this ministry whereby that we, all, we, we always go back to that matrix. We always go back to a lot of the basics that teach us the, the starting point of Christianity, which is we made an agreement, we, we, we know what God wants us to agree with, and more specifically, we know that living bread is the key, which are the basic requirements, and that when you put confidence in this, in all of these uh, 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 truths, we hold these truths, uh, we, we hold them, and we carry our cross, and, uh, and when you put confidence in that, that makes you wise. Then you own the agape love of Jesus Christ. Because you must love the Lord your God with all of your heart in order for you to get love. In order for you to comply with the requirement of basic living bread, the overall principle is to love God. We delineate what that love is, which is basically allowing yourself to be humiliated. That's all it basically is. Then when you allow that to happen, especially when you repent and kneel before the Lord your God and confess the truth, then we can move on to, now I own love. But you're not going to own love by wandering through the church. You need to do the, what, what we teach here, okay? And then you own that love, and that's the goal here, okay? You own that agape love, and all of this was done by the grace of God, and, and which means, that we, and that goes back to what we're going to talk about here in a moment, which is to, the grace in which we stand. This grace wherein we stand, that's the key. I'll be right back. Maranatha. <laughs> 